what you should consider before you get pierced. Coming up right now. Piercing done. Number one, you need to find a well-experienced, well-skilled piercer in your area. You need to vet them. You need to go and visit the studio, whatever it takes. Do your research online. Look at reviews. Talk to people that have been pierced and find that right person for you. Number two, is the piercer going to be there to support you? Uh, This is important because as issues may arise in that long period of time of healing, You need some type of support group. And in most cases, the only one you're going to find that's going to do the proper job for you is not a bunch of people on the Internet, but the person who did the piercing. Nothing, nothing comes close to actually going into a studio, having a piercer evaluate a problem um, and come up with a solution. You can't do that well on the Internet. I don't care how many people you got responding, and the chances are is most of the information you're going to get from your average Joe, even if they have 50 piercings, is going to be incorrect or outdated. Number three, does the studio stock biocompatible, implant-grade, certified jewelry in the correct sizing and styles that you're going to need for that particular piercing? Do a little bit of research. There's lots of it online that talk about what's the right jewelry for that piercing, a lot about the proper materials. There's a number of those videos on this particular um, channel. So check that out. Do a little research, and you'll have a better understanding of what you need to look for. Number four, does your piercer supply detailed aftercare instructions uh, in writing, verbally, et cetera? Here at the Axiom, what we do is we go through a consultation before we do the piercing. That covers a majority of that commitment that you're going to need to make. Then, afterwards, we'll go through a very basic aftercare instructions, and we'll give you written instructions that have your jewelry size, uh, style, et cetera, what it's made out of. Also, um, who did it? what it was done, and what the average healing time is. And on top of that, we have a very detailed, or I have a very detailed video on my website and on this channel that talks about how to heal a piercing. So we generally suggest watching that, and if you have any questions, to get a hold of us. We also make sure that you want to make sure that you have definite content information for your piercer. Number five, will you have access to this piercer? I know people travel and get piercings. That's common. I have a lot of people that come from pretty much Iowa, the whole state, and the surrounding area, and even further. Um, Are you going to have access to me? Probably not. Is there somebody in your hometown or area where you're going to be able to get a hold of them and possibly get some help in the process? Uh, It's kind of one of those things. Uh, It's hard to find somebody that, really is wide open and willing to help you regardless of the problem and regardless if they are the ones that did the piercing. Uh, Me, I've always been open. I don't care where you got the piercing done. If you have a problem, I want to help you because my end goal in life is to see a lot of people out there with really healthy piercings. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it because we like it when you like it. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time we post something. If you have anything to add to the conversation, please comment. Even if it's just a question that has nothing to do with this, I will try to answer. Also, check out our merch store. A link is in the description. Now let's move on to number six. Are you going to be going on vacation or moving? Changing location, uh, going on vacation where you're going to want to swim, all this other stuff is not a good idea to do during that healing process. Not only is there the added stress of travel, moving, et cetera, but changing your environment or not be able to control how clean your environment is can lead to an infection. Also, having access to clean water um, and et cetera can be very important during the healing process. So if you do have a big plan to move or change or go on vacation in the near future, consider delaying getting the piercing until you're more established and stable. Number seven, employment and future employment. 
Now, uh, if you are employed somewhere and you're getting a very visible piercing that's maybe a little bit on the edge or not considered normal or common, you probably want to talk to your employer before you get it done. Don't get it done and then go in the next day and just expect them to deal with it. Uh, there, You need to talk to them, check out your company's dress code, etc. If you plan on moving into a more professional style uh, employment, office work especially, uh, on the high corporate level, I really suggest that you consider that before you get a bunch of facial piercings that you're probably going to need to remove. Now, you might say, hey, it'll be fine. I'll just take them out. Nobody will know the difference. The reality is, is there still will be scarring. People will notice that in some cases. So always take these things into consideration when getting a piercing, especially if you're whether if you're rather young or you're not established in a career. Number nine, every piercing has commitments that are involved during the healing process and sometimes after. Um, you also are going to have some behavioral changes. This might include not letting your kid, letting the dogs, your kids, or cats. Sleep in the bed with you. Um, not sleeping on the piercing indefinitely. Uh, change of diet. It might affect speech, what have you. might affect your sex life. You need to consider these things beforehand. Uh, this is one of the reasons why we give you these consultations at the beginning of a piercing is so that you have knowledge of how life is going to change. And if it is going to change drastically in a way that you're not willing to commit to, then you shouldn't get pierced. Number nine, reactions from friends, family, and the general public. I kind of talked about this a little bit earlier. Uh, if you have, uh, if you're in a relationship, a committed one, let's say you get a sexual piercing, they may not like it. Not only because they don't like the idea of it, or they don't like the feel of it, but they may not like the idea that you didn't discuss this with them beforehand. The other thing is, is that um, it's going to change the way people perceive you. They, people that are prejudiced towards things are going to be the type of people that it doesn't matter if they've known you for 30 years, they associate that piercing with that type of individual regardless. Um, you just got to be prepared for this and willing to deal with it. Um it's probably going, you know, hopefully they can get past it. Hopefully they can figure out that nothing's changed in your life. You're still the same person. But it can affect things with friends, especially family, on a social level or the general public. You really can't control these people. They generally have this prejudice, and chances are it's probably, probably never going to change. So get used to having those reactions. With me, I just generally ignore them. Um, and I've gotten to the point where I don't even notice it anymore. Number 10, long-term goals, uh, a.k.a. additional groupings, piercings, etc. When you're getting a piercing done in an area that's kind of been on the smaller side, let's use the example of an ear piercing. You kind of want to think ahead that, hey, I want to get my trachis done, but I also want to get this done. I want to get an upper ear cartilage, but I also want a flat. I want uh, a rook. I want. You kind of need to kind of plan these things out and discuss it with your piercer when they're marking to leave the proper amount of room in there to do an additional thing or to plan out a whole grouping of them. Same thing goes for oral piercings, uh, genital piercings, even nipple piercings. If you're doing multiple nipple piercings, it's a huge, it makes a huge difference if you talk to the piercer before you do it, then it does to come back three or three years later and say, I've got this healed nipple piercing. I want to get a second one because that position of that first one will greatly affect where the other one is even possible to do if it's possible at all. Number 11, the scarring caused by the piercing. Regardless of how well the piercing is taken care of, there is going to be some scarring left over after you remove the jewelry. I talked about this a little bit before, but you should always consider that beforehand. Number 12, the thing that most people don't even think about, the additional cost of getting a piercing. Even though you're getting, you know, the piercing costs X number of dollars, there's additional costs that are going to be involved. You may have to buy additional aftercare products. You might have to buy additional things to help isolate the piercing during the healing process. Uh, you may, and you may have to buy a shorter post at one point or time. 
take into account, ask your piercer if there's any additional costs that are going to be involved with getting the piercing. For example, if you're getting your tongue pierced, then it's going to be a flat rate, but that doesn't include if you need to get any additional products for aftercare, and it doesn't include downsizing to the shorter barbell. Usually, most studios will give you a break on downsizing jewelry to give you kind of a discount because they want you to do it. The next thing is how will having the piercing affect diet, speech, sleeping, exercise, and just general daily life. Having an ear piercing can affect whether or not you're going to wear headphones or earbuds or a helmet comfortably. That can be a life-changing event depending on who you are. If you're one of those people that relies on, uh, let's say, earbuds for just about everything, getting a trachis piercing or a dafe piercing may make it get it to the point where you can never use any ear ear pods ever again. Also, it can affect you if you work in the medical industry and uh, using stethoscopes. You need to consider these things beforehand and ask your piercer questions about that. Also, a lot of times with upper ear cartilage piercings, you can never sleep on them again. The same thing with navels. Navels can affect whether or not you can wear high-waisted pants comfortably ever again. So these things all need to be considered. With most genital piercings, when you switch partners or oral piercings, um, you do need to practice safe sex until you've both been tested because you are a little bit more acceptable to STDs, even though you should be doing it anyway. So consider those lifestyle changes before you get the piercing done. The next thing is, is will that disruption, that change in your habits, et cetera, be short-term or long-term when you get the piercing? Some piercings only affect your life for a short period of time, the healing process. Other piercings can affect it long-term, like I just talked about, changing clothing, changing diet, etc. Some piercings are more prone to do that than others. For example, getting an earlobe piercing. Yes, you may have issues sleeping on it in the future, but it's not going to be as much of an issue as it's going to be with an industrial piercing, where I wouldn't really ever suggest sleeping on it. Kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but how will this piercing affect your, your partner? If you're getting a piercing that's in a sexual area, Um, It will affect how you interact with someone that you're intimate with. It's something that you need to discuss with your partner before you have it done. Next one, is the timing right? I kind of talked about vacations and et cetera, but are you going through going to be working 90 hours a week for the next six months? Are you going to be more outside? Are you going to want to swim? Are you gonna are are you gonna have uh, your kids in town and need to go do stuff with them? Is it gonna be more stressful? Is this the right time to be dealing with a healing piercing? It's something most people don't think about, but you should consider it. Next one: What is your motivation for getting this piercing? I know a lot of people get things done spear of the moment, and it's kind of like this big thing. The reality is, is you really need to understand what your motivation behind getting the piercing is done and think that through. Uh, There's the right reasons, wrong reasons. That's different from everybody, but consider it. For example, if somebody's talking you into it, getting it done, you're not going to have the motivation to take care of it. If this is something that they want you to get done and you also want to get done, then that commitment doesn't seem like that big of a deal. But if it's related to someone else pressuring you into it, you're not going to have a good experience more than likely. So think about what the motivation behind the piercing is. Already talked about this, but we'll talk about it again. Leave room for future piercings. If you're doing piercings in certain areas, consider what additional piercings you may want to have in that area in the future. The next one, pets. If you have a dog, cat, or uh, iguana, or what have you, Having them in contact with that healing piercing is going to cause infections. So you really need to consider how you interact with your pets, how important that is to you, and whether or not you can deal with kicking them out of the bed for anywhere from six months to a year or longer and how that's going to affect them. Isolation. Uh, All piercings during the healing process need to be isolated, some even after the piercing is healed. So you should always consider how you're going to isolate the piercing. Allergies. Uh, If you have any metal allergies or allergies to a certain type of uh, chemicals, et cetera, 
Understand that and bring that up with your piercer. Let them know, inform them so they can pick out the proper jewelry of material for you. And also, if they use anything in the process of piercing you, they will know not to use that or use a substitute of some sort. It's kind of important that you understand if you're allergic to anything. Well, that's all I have to say on that subject. Till next time, here's hoping only piercing seal of ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see you for your body piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Take care and check out one of these other videos.